the people, the supplies, the nerves, the time. Let's talk about some of the barriers to creating art outdoors and what I do to tackle it. Creating outdoors is something that I have come to love. It's something that makes me nervous, even embarrassed at times, but something that always leaves me feeling happier than before I started. I'm a full-time doctor and an artist and I make weekly art videos and in this vlog I'm going to take you along with me for a short drawing session in a park and answer some of the common questions that you've been asking about creating outdoors. I am going to try my hardest to refrain from talking too much as what I loved about this trip was how relaxing it was, the birds chirping, the wind blowing and I want you to enjoy some of that too. It's been said in some studies that walking in nature has a positive effect on your blood pressure and overall health and I can certainly see why. Starting off with one of the most asked questions is do you feel nervous about people watching? And the honest answer is sometimes. <laughs> um, there are fewer people who actually watch what you're doing that you than you think or certainly that I've noticed. And the ones who watch maybe more obviously or who have stopped and like talked to me have always been really, really, really nice. I'm getting more used to it um, than I was before, especially the more I do painting and the more I do drawing outdoors. But yeah, it, it can definitely be nerve wracking sometimes. And personally, that worry has been one of the biggest challenges that I've faced when it comes to actually going outdoors and painting or going outdoors and creating. So it's something that I'm certainly still working on. And some of the things that helped me tackle this were painting with friends or with family around, even if they're not necessarily painting along. Just having someone else there that's with you that you know can be quite a comforting thing and can make it more social and certainly less daunting. Another thing that's helped is painting in a place where people are preoccupied with their own things. So sometimes that could be cafes or in restaurants or in offices, just somewhere that's like so busy that people are doing their own thing. And I guess in this era of having social media and phones and things a lot of people are quite distracted and when I am in those places I just try to find a nice quiet corner maybe if I'm in a cafe or something with a wall behind me so that I know that there isn't anyone literally watching over my shoulder and that can remove that kind of element of worry behind that. And another thing that has also helped me is just remembering that for the most part the people who are coming to watch or the people who want to ask you questions are fascinated by the fact that there is an artist and they are really nice and they're just super curious and I myself get really really curious when I see other artists so it's just trying to remember you know the kind of point of view that I would have if I was watching an artist and I saw them create like I would really want to see what they're doing and I would really want to encourage them and that is the mindset that I assume most people come with <laughs> not necessarily always the case but so far that has been the case for me and it's made it very very pleasant and very nice speaking of lovely people thank you to everyone who's already liked this video if you're enjoying it then don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button as it makes a massive difference to me and to my channel and it lets me know that it's worthwhile and you're enjoying it thank you next question how do you find somewhere to paint and i can be super indecisive about the smallest things like big life decisions i'm there but when it comes to finding somewhere to paint that could in theory take me forever so i've developed a few kind of techniques to help me with this and one of the things that i've done in the past such as in the cafe series if you've seen that video is to actually create a, a challenge or to go out with purpose to know that oh okay today i want to um, paint storefronts or I'd like to paint restaurants or any of those things that kind of catch my eye have a rough idea about the area that I want to be in and kind of take it from there um, and that worked really nicely for the cafes in London series it meant that I actually got to go out more than I normally would and I started discovering London in a really really beautiful way so that worked out really really nicely 
when I'm on holiday I tend to like to paint the like well it, it's twofold I tend to like to paint the most iconic things if that makes sense or the things most associated with that place or something that's like really touristy <laughs> really touristy um just to again remember the place better I feel and to like look at it and be like yes this was exactly from this place for example Tower Bridge that I did last week in my last video um but when I'm actually there what I like to do is look at the thing that captures my attention the most so for here it was this absolutely stunning massive tree <laughs> in a you know there were just so many different things but initially that's the first thing that captured my attention I sometimes get overwhelmed start looking around and seeing if there's anything else that I could draw or I could paint and quite often end up going back to that first thing that caught my attention so that's how I tend to narrow it down when I'm actually there and also I am trying to get better about urban sketching in either local areas or areas that are easily accessible rather than always aiming for the big touristy thing or you know feeling like I need to only be on holiday or I need to be in a really nice area before I can urban sketch and that has made it so much more fun because a lot of the time when I look back at my favorite paintings they are actually paintings of like streets <laughs> like you know a street that in theory you know could be anywhere so that's something that I definitely want to get a bit better at and I think it has definitely helped me appreciate my surroundings a lot more because essentially there's so much untapped potential that I literally walk by every day with the intention of going somewhere grand or finding somewhere excellent to paint but honestly I think just start local start around start somewhere that you feel comfortable and start small what art supplies do you use now if you know me then you know that i love art supplies and i have so many art supplies and i have also made quite a few separate videos discussing what art supplies i use when i travel and when i'm doing urban sketching and also sharing tips and tricks and hacks and i'll link all of them in the description as well as above i also have no doubts that i will create more videos with that same topic in the future and the reason being i like experimenting with different art supplies i like taking them outdoors i like sharing my experiences with you but only because I have so many art supplies and I hope that when you watch these videos and when you see me using these different art supplies outdoors what I'm showing you is that you can use what you have and eventually with time you can develop what you like or what works for you and modify your kit accordingly. I share these supplies that I use not to tell you that you need the same but in fact the opposite to say that you can use what you have and to share some inspiration with the hope that maybe I'm using a random art supply that you have used that you didn't know could be used outside and you have fun and for example in this video I am using a rainbow pencil that's I believe for children but I'm not actually sure if it's for children but definitely something that is childlike and we used to use something similar as children and a moleskin sketchbook i'm also using an art traveler board which will feature in a whole video very very soon so consider this your exclusive so i tend to have different setups depending on what i'm painting where i'm painting etc and also what i feel like using that week <laughs> but in terms of my watercolor setup it involves having watercolors usually in a tin I'll also have a jar for my water a spray bottle I have a uni pin fine liner but any fine liner will do just to add inking I have a pencil for some sketching and then a paper towel for dabbing off excess water I love painting with gouache as you may also know and I have my gouache travel palette and that will pretty much have the same setup other than the fact that, or, that I don't necessarily need the fine liner although I still like to carry it with me in case I want to do something different and I also like to have um, some palette paper on hand so that I can do some mixing in the bigger space that actually comes with the portable gouache palette and if you haven't seen that palette I will link that as well because yes I love it 
and that is pretty much it in a nutshell now there are lots of different things and modifications that i have done to make it easier so for example i've incorporated magnets so that i can stick my um watercolors or my um gouache palettes and have them stay firm i have recently got this art travel board as i've mentioned and sometimes i like having some masking tape for nice crisp edges so there are definitely things that you can add and i go into way more detail in the videos and i'll leave a playlist at the end so that if you need more help with that or you want to know tips and tricks and avoid making some of the mistakes that i've made then you can definitely watch that as well i could literally talk about it forever but i'm just going to cut it short and say use what you have and you probably don't need as much as you think you do <laughs> next thing is how long does it take you to paint outdoors and um, as the weather has started to improve, I've definitely started painting or drawing outdoors more. I'm trying to do it at least once a week at the moment, but it really does just depend on my work schedule. I'm trying to make the most of the little pockets of time that I have and creating like bite-sized art sessions. And as part of that, I started drawing more as opposed to just painting all the time. Typically, a drawing will take me anything from 5 to 15 minutes if I know especially that I want to turn this drawing into a painting. Um, if I know that I can just relax, then in theory, a drawing could take me like an hour. <laughs> um, a watercolour painting will typically take me closer to an hour, a gouache painting a bit longer, maybe an hour and a half. And if time won't allow, then one thing that I've also started doing is doing the sketches there and taking lots of pictures and videos to remember the moment and then completing the painting once I get home or as soon as I can. And last but not least, why do I do it? I do it because it's fun, it's relaxing and it gives me some of the best memories of my time there. I honestly love it and it's not one of the easiest things to do. So I've created a playlist to help and encourage you to do the same and I'll link that at the end of this video. If you're still watching, you are a real MVP and I really, really, really appreciate you. Let me know that you're still watching by telling me your favourite place to create. Thank you so much and I will see you next week. Bye.